Hello and welcome to the first edition of our Fitness in VR videos and this week we're going to be talking about Box VR and I'm joined today by Polish Paul. Thanks for joining us Paul, how are you? I'm all good, hello everyone, nice to see everyone, hope you enjoy the video. <laughs> Yeah, I can't, Hope really it works see, okay. I can't really see everyone though. <laughs> <laughs> you will just imagine they're there. Yeah. We'll just imagine they're with you. <laughs> yeah. Come your own your own living room. <laughs> yeah, hoping technology hasn't failed us or failed me probably more than Paul because uh, <laughs> Paul's very prepared. I'm not. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I'm recording. I've got a backup here. I'm recording on both programs. <laughs> so <laughs> even if video don't record, we got audio at least. <laughs> it's probably for the, it's probably safest bet, really, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Because <laughs> you just never have these things turn out. <laughs> but yeah, really good to be joined by Paul today and to be coming on this video. As uh, we've briefly mentioned, uh, Fitness of VR, this is a kind of a campaign we're going to be running over a course of a few weeks where we're going to be looking at a different game each week. Uh, and Paul and I are going to be chatting about some of these games, our experiences with them, kind of what we feel like they're going to be dealing with with fitness and you know how they kind of benefit people and what kind of a tool VR can be to really help people uh, you know, stay fit and healthy in this time of crisis. Uh, and of course, it makes sense to start with Box VR because Box VR really probably is the the main fitness app for VR right now. It's the most popular one, and it's certainly the one that has had the most attention from a mass market point of view. Uh, so it comes from FitXR. This is actually their first game, amazingly, and it's in a bid to develop an immersive VR fitness game with real world implications uh, centered around boxer size. Have you ever done any boxer size before, Paul? No, no, until I played Box VR, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to say, it's not something I tried. Funny enough, I kept, before I came on this uh, to chat with you, I had a little blast on it again and just to kind of really get myself acclimatized to the controls and everything. And I'm absolutely spent. <laughs> <laughs> I am completely and utterly knackered. So um, that game definitely does what it says on the tin. <laughs> yeah, that's all, yeah. Uh, I, I watched, so there is somewhere on YouTube video uh, at one of the universities, they actually use this game to uh, like measure if it's actual exercise. Yeah. and how much it benefits and I think it was on pair uh, with running you know that as wow. how tired it gets you and how much calories you burn yeah yeah because I, I was looking at the counter on the on the right hand side to see how many calories I'd burnt and just just on a quick go on it I'd, I'd spent like 200 calories and I was yeah. like what I've done 200 <laughs> calories this is crazy so um, yeah, it's, it works really, really well. And obviously there are much more advanced courses, but we'll dive into that very quickly. Uh, but in this year, essentially just hold, you're punching like kind of like multicolored orbs that are coming towards you, like blue and pink. Uh, you can actually block, so you can kind of do this to kind of yeah. like shield yourself from incoming, um, I don't know how you describe them really. What would you describe it as? It's incoming um, blobs. <laughs> blobs, incoming blobs, that'll yeah. do it. Um, and then you can kind of tilt your body left and right. You can duck down. So you've got like kind of like these girders coming towards you, which is pretty intense. Yeah. Um, and I, I was really starting to hurt my back actually. I was kind of moving around <laughs> so much. I was like, what, what am I doing? You know, so I was like a right idiot in my living room, but. <laughs> It works really well. It's very effective. Um, and of course, you've got music in the background as well. So like you can define your playlists. Uh, there's, there's, I think there was some rock I saw in there, a bit of yeah, pop. Yeah, that was lately yeah, added. So yeah, it's got really good library, you know, compared yeah. to other Living games. And it, all, it was all added for free as well. So yeah, know, they did good, good with that. They're game like royalty, they're royalty free tracks, aren't they? Yeah. So um, I think they, they, they're like, you know, they're not necessarily like Beat Saber's got licensed songs, whereas yeah. like Box VR uses its own kind of, yeah, defined track list. It's very, very cool. Um, so obviously, yeah, the, the purpose of the game is to kind of increase your energy levels, uh, to build strength. Uh, I can definitely feel it in my arms already. Um, lose weight, which is obviously a key one, um, and obviously improve your overall health in general, which I think is it's it's really important at the moment, isn't it? Because I think um, obviously people rely on the gym. I know friends who've been going to the gym like four or five times a week, um, but it, I think yeah. when you can't do that. Uh, obviously, you have to try and find alternatives, and VR is great for that, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Best way now to exercise at home, you know, it's VR, I think. Unless you've got your own equipment, but not many people do. But yeah. with VR, you just put headset on and you can do a bit of exercise. Mm. Definitely. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the wonderful thing is obviously people talk about like having exercise bikes and they talk about having like treadmills at home and, you know, they've got their weights and things like that. But I think when you've got VR, you can kind of... Um, 
because it's a strange thing and it's a psychological thing but like when you're looking at the same uh, things on your same walls same four walls you look at the ceiling you look at the tv kind of like you, you that's your same set and sights and sounds whereas like if you put your headset on you can kind of feel like you're in a gym you're in a kind of a you're, you're on a another planet or something depending on what the yeah. kind of the setting is you know i think that does help a little bit psychologically yeah yeah it's always nice to jump in vr anyway so if you can exercise as well it just makes it that much better mm, absolutely and uh, so, so with box vr there are multiple settings which you can kind of like you know play around with you can be in a graveyard you can be in a gym you can be on another planet so there's a lot of different settings you can kind of yeah. play around with and uh, you know get yourself um, working out essentially doing boxer size on the moon so you know, <laughs> why not <laughs> um, and as I say with box VR you can change the workouts you can kind of set the length and intensity of the workout uh, and there's obviously high scores and leaderboards and things like that so did, did you find when you were playing did you feel quite competitive with, with other people on your friends list? I'm usually play by myself I never really even look at uh, leaderboards <laughs> I just play, I usually just choose the workout because there is so many different game modes, but for me, because I not always got that much time. So sometimes I just use like 15 minutes workout and just play that. So I never really look how I did. And, you know, I still exercised, I still moved around. So, yeah. But some yeah. people are, of course, going for it. <laughs> oh, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I know a few people who really, really do. Um I think, and it's weird, like, I have found, especially on things at Ring Fit Adventure as well, like I've got my friends and so I switch and I see people all the time, like trying and alternate and who's got the highest <laughs> highest level and who's yeah. doing this and that here. And it's just, it's, it becomes, becomes real like competition, which is which is kind of cool, I suppose. Box VR as well, with some versions, you can upload your own music as well. So you can actually like have your own music in the game if you want to do that. If, you, if, if you're finding the track list isn't working for you, uh, you can have your customized workout. So you can like the setting as long as you want, what you do within that workout, you know, what kind of, the parameters are of it uh, and obviously you can practice your moves as well with the different intensities in the game uh, there's a survival mode if you want to do that you can box for as long as you want you've got 10 lives so it's, <laughs> that would be pretty intense i yeah. would imagine um and obviously multiplayer which you mentioned as well but you can compete against others in real time um it, and it's been featured everywhere isn't it i mean I, I found with box vr i was watching um this morning a few weeks ago and and there it was they were talking about fitness on there and they were just advertising box vr on on this morning with phil and holly and i was like wow you yeah. know this is yeah it did it's you know because it's a good app box vr it's been they've been working on it for a while as well mm. so i think box vr was probably the first game to use this rhythmic punching uh, technique what they're using pretty much everywhere now Mm. Because Box VR was uh, in development even before Beat Saber was a thing. So mm. I think that was like first one to introduce this kind of gameplay. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Because I think a lot of people get confused and, and think, you know, Beat Saber was kind of like the, the, the original kind of motion movement music yeah. rhythm game on VR because it's the most popular one. And, you know, and it's it, rightfully so. But it's, it's important to remember that things did come before that and things are going to come from it that are not necessarily inspired by Beat Saber. So yeah. it's... Mm, it's definitely its own animal it is, yeah. um and obviously there it's 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 won like fitness awards as well so it's won a fitness game of the year award which is quite amazing so it's i think it's a real testament because it shows uh, you know how people perceive and see how how relevant this is to the mainstream and how important it's becoming as an application and vr as a whole works in terms of exercise yeah yeah it, it is a true exercising app i think that's the only one we've got at the moment i know some other games will count your calories uh, super hot does it i don't i can't remember if beat saber if they updated it or not mm -hmm. but box vr all the works out are designed by fitness instructors as well and it, yeah it all was done you know to aim for this fitness audience to give people proper exercise mm. Yeah, and that's the beauty of it. Um, and I think something else as well that's really been interesting is you've seen the press attention, like, you know, Discovery Channel has covered it, Fox News has covered it. And and I think when people now look at uh, VR as potentially a fitness application, they do see Box VR as, as, the, as the game, the go-to game to yeah. really, you know, to do that, which is amazing. Very good game. And they updated it also so much. So yeah. it's... So if you if anyone ever played Box VR when it's first released and you play it now, it's kind of like much, much different and much bigger game. Mm. And you've got two new DLC packs, haven't they? So there's the, the Essentials one, which I think just came out, which is, uh, you know, that, that adds like an hour of new songs and playlists. Yeah, I think that came out on everything and it's coming to PSVR as well soon. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's excellent. It's excellent. Like they're, they're keeping to update, and it's 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 a funny thing because like, is it a game that necessarily they need a sequel to? I mean, is is this essentially? Could they just continually update this with DLC and yeah, content? Yeah, I know. Yeah, probably they could have. Yeah, been. it's it's one of those types. Of, it's kind of its own self-contained animal. I mean, there are probably things they could do to improve it, and there are probably things they could do to adjust it. But is that necessarily something they need a new game for? So. Yeah, it's it's interesting. When you look at that, and obviously you talk about VR, I mean, what else do you, when you play other games in VR, I mean, we're going to talk about other games in, in the coming weeks, but I mean, when you've played other games in VR, do you see them really kind of, do you find yourself work, feeling as if you've had a workout playing certain games that are not, you know, necessarily tailored to become an exercise games? Uh, some of them, yeah. Uh, all the, pretty much all the games what gives you this physical movement. Uh, like, I've been playing a lot Gorn on PC, uh, that's coming to PSVR soon. Uh, and this game really makes you move a lot, especially if you use the default movement system because you have to move your arms around as well to walk around. Mm. So that can make you really tired. Uh, I don't know, Sariento as well, you know, a lot of physical movement. So there is, in virtual reality, if they go for this immersion to make you feel like you're in the game and get your body moving, so pretty much every game probably helping you like stay fit. Yeah, it's amazing. It is amazing. What would you, um, when, when you play stuff like BoxVR, what is it about it that you think could be done better? Um, is, is there something in there you feel like you would personally like to see that wasn't in the game? Uh, I think for me, because the most I play it is PlayStation VR. So for mm. me, the game works great, but if they added maybe a few more environments, I think on mm. PSVR at the moment, we've got like three environments. So if they added a few more, I think that's the only thing I would do. Yeah. And and what do you think it does really well as as, a, as an exercise and as a game? You know, what, what does it really achieve? What what would you say is the best part about it? I think it does really good, gets you motivated to keep on exercising because most of the songs on the soundtrack are like this kind of motiv motivation type songs to keep you going. You've got this little calories counter on the side as well, so you can always check. Plus, you've got that combo multiplayer as well to make sure you like uh, hitting everything clean. So, yeah, it's, it does a good job to just makes you keep on wanting exercise. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, the reason we're doing this uh, is because, obviously, that we are in a very difficult position at the moment in the world. I mean, we're, a lot of us are having forced to be in staying home and, uh, you know, we're having to find new ways to stay fit and healthy and, you know, keep ourselves active. Um, and, obviously, that's very, that's a very important subject to you particularly um, because you've uh, obviously you work on the front lines, you know, as part of as, as a carer. Um, so, I mean, what, from your perspective, why is it so important for people to stay home at the moment and try to find ways to, to do these things within the comfort of their own home rather than seek, you know, spending time outdoors? I know. I mean, it's probably hard for people to just be at home as well, but you have to understand like, uh, like I saw it firsthand when people dying from it. So you have to understand, you have to, it just spreads so easily. You have to just listen to what you've been told, really. Try to stay at home, keep yourself busy, play box VR maybe, <laughs> some other PSVR games. Yeah. And just, yeah, try to do best you can, even if it might be hard for you, you know, it's very important. Yeah. I mean, obviously you had um, on your videos, you, you make it such an important point, but you say you stay at home, play games, save lives. And, you, and that's a big part of your messaging at the moment, every one of your videos. Um, and you know, I know also you posted a video recently where you've been saying you've been struggling to sleep and, you know, and with, with neighbors and things like that. I mean, how it's 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 awkward, I suppose, from your position when, you know, you, you're trying your best to advertise the facts and you're doing everything possible in your power. And there are still people who are not adhering to those guidelines and are making life difficult for you, essentially. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's not it's not holiday for everyone. You know, this this lockdown is to keep everyone safe, not for people to just do what they want and have a massive parties at house. So for me, with my neighbors, what was annoying me, I could have done loads and loads of shifts, extra hours, you know, super tired. And then you're trying to sleep and somebody blasting music all night, arguing and shouting. So I was going around to them, trying to talk to them uh, in my Cookie Monsters pyjamas angry at night. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the next day they spoke to us and apologized and that, but they, they always done it again. So... In the end, we just rang police <laughs> and since, <laughs> since then they was quiet. So hopefully it will last now. 
yeah it's it, yeah i mean it's it's not, it's not nice to put you in that position where you have to go around and do that i mean it's, yeah it's i mean i didn't pitch. want it to and i don't want people don't mind people having a drink and that but you don't have to blast your music full blast so it's you know you can and social flowers now. right yeah yeah and i mean they've been go they could have start you know like 11 p.m and still been going when i've been setting up for work in morning so like something had to be done so, I mean, just to ask, I mean, obviously we, we've chatted about this now and, and the impact it has on you, but what actually do you do in your day to day work and sort of how how many hours are you working at the moment? I mean, it must be a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't even tell you. Probably about 60, 60, around 70 a week sometimes. Maybe now lately, past last few days, it seems all to like calming down now. But I work in a place, it was a care home, then we've had new owners. So now we still got elderly people, but also you get in a lot of people with like serious illnesses. And this is people who are, uh, they well enough to not be in hospital, but not good enough like to live at home. Yeah. So sometimes they come in for a while till they get a bit better. So we can, you know, take care of them, give them medications they need and everything. And then they go home and of course some people just are so poorly that they come to die because their families or they don't want uh, to die in hospital. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a sense for me, I think I've mentioned this to you before, it's quite a sensitive subject for me as well because my, uh, my, my both my father and my sister are in care homes at the moment. Yeah. Um, and I think care homes essentially are not getting the, perhaps the mainstream attention as perhaps the, the, the work that's going on in the hospitals. And obviously yeah. that's massively important and crucial to, to our survival. But I think there is so much happening else in other parts of the world that uh, is not perhaps getting that attention. And, you know, there's, there's a huge risk obviously within care homes, you know, you know, and one outbreak could be, could be oh, fatal. Oh, yeah, so. the hardest thing for us was because obviously we were close with NHS. Uh, I don't know if you heard uh, uh, during their corona briefing when they said they've got like 8,000 extra beds for private sectors. So that's what we've, we've been part of it, uh, my place. But the, yeah, it was really, it's hard to make sure that people who are at our place, they stay safe and we not pass, uh, you know, this virus from people who's come from hospital, we're not mm. passing on them. So it was like constant changing your PPE and, you know, make sure you clean <laughs> and you're doing yeah. everything properly. It takes time a lot, but, yeah. and we, man we manage quite well. So I'm glad now it seems uh, like it's really calming down now. So that's good. I mean, just, just to kind of give people an overview, because I, I think a lot of people don't fully understand or realize or the extent of what the things that you're currently, people like you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis as frontline staff. I mean, talk us through kind of like a day of work for you. Yeah, so, well, first thing I come to, I get up early, I come to work. We're going to have handover. They're going to tell us if uh, maybe somebody new come at night. They're going to tell us, you know, who died night before, who needs our change, and then we start to work. So what we do, the, we're trying to split the staff. So the, the, there is, will be some staff working just with corona patients. And then there will be some staff working with, you know, other people, because obviously other, other care needs to be done as well. So that's what we do. And then we've got in our uh, equipment. So we get a mask, uh, then we get in our goggles and our aprons and gowns and everything depends which, which side you work in. And uh, you do have to change them a lot as well. So, you know, that's why I think that's why it's always in news and on tele that PP is very important because during my one shift, I probably gonna go through like 150 different pieces of PP. So I think that's a struggle to supply that as well. So a lot, isn't it? It's incredible. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's for everyone's safety. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just have to change it. You cannot put anyone at risk. So you always have to make sure it's changed. And you go start changing it in room. Some people, some things what you can take off already when you with somebody, you know, then you go outside and change the rest of it. Wash your hands, wash your face and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the crucial thing is that people don't uh, don't see that side of it. You know, they they see the briefings on the news. There'll, there'll be some, there's been some documentaries and things that have been shown in between all of this, and obviously that there's only so much they can show and should show. I think because I don't yeah. think that it's important. It's important that people's privacy is protected in this as well. Yeah. Um, but from your, it's just interesting to hear from your perspective, like kind of 
you know, this is something you have to do on a daily basis. And like you say, you're working 60 hours a week. You know, this this is, it's a, it's a lot. And on top yeah. of that, you're trying to juggle a YouTube channel as well, which yeah, is... Yeah, I know. think that's what scares me to keep saying. It's, all, it's always like <laughs> just a nice escape after everything, just to make video and, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, that must be, you must be so tired though. I mean, it's just like finding that time to do it. And, you know, and obviously I know as well, you you, you and you just recently got married as well. And, you know, your yeah. families and it's, it's so yeah, much going on with you right now. Two months time as well. <laughs> so yeah, it all happened at once. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we're getting um, through it. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's really it's really good to to see you, and obviously the the, the work you're doing is amazing right now. And um, you know, we we really appreciate you taking the time to come and chat with us. And uh, well, that's going to wrap it up for Box VR. Uh, but we've we obviously we we do um, obviously we've mentioned to Paul here, like we, we're, we're representing a lot of charities and we're working with different charities. Uh, we may have just seen actually that uh, went live just today uh, as a recording uh, yesterday when you're watching this um, is actually Games for Carers, uh, which is basically supporting uh, NHS staff through key mailer. Oh, yeah, I saw it. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah awesome. So I they think can get to games. Most, yeah, it's, a great, it's such a great initiative. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, the <laughs> companies gone together and said, we're going to give away our games for free for people. So, you know, it's appreciated. I think some people thought it was the government. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the government just giving free games to people instead of PPE. It's like, I it's think not with, with PPE, I think they still get a lot in hospitals because, of course, they got so much staff. But at my place, really, you know, we didn't really have problems. Like, there was days when we were thinking we might run out, but we never actually did. So just want to put it out there. I think hospitals is because they got one hospital. I don't know how many people they employed, like thousands and thousands. So I think for hospitals, it's uh, more important, really. Absolutely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. As I say, that's a really cool initiative. So if you have an NHS email address, make sure you look out for that and get signed up to that because that's a really cool initiative. Uh, and we've also got other charities that we're working with as well. So um, stay tuned for that. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for Box VR. Thank you for joining us and uh, keep tuning for next week when we'll be talking about... <gasps> Find out soon. <laughs> <laughs> Take care.